Hey everybody, welcome to our live. I am Heather and we come to you live each and every day, Monday through Thursday. Um, we bring it to you. Um, so you can learn about Luminous, what we have to offer, um, your starter kit, how to practice. And then we also uh, show you other options. So other products that we have. So you know us for our airbrushing, of course. And so we show you the airbrushing, we show you the starter kit, but then we go into other products that we have. We have skincare and we have color cosmetics. And so it's really a cool um, way to learn more about Luminous. So hello, Veronica. So like I said, every time we do go over um, the starter kit, what you get in your starter kit and how to start with your starter kit. And, um, and so today I labeled it, do you airbrush every single day? Do you? Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Cindy, Veronica. Um, do y'all airbrush every day? If you put makeup on, do you airbrush? Is the question we need to ponder. Um, I feel like something just happened, but maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Um, hey, Jeannie, how are you? Let's, uh, let's look at one of our starter kits. This is our icon. We also have the Icon Pro and the Legend. And then, of course, we have the Breeze. And the Breeze is our new, new char um, chargeable cordless system. That is amazing. And that's the one I'm going to be using. Hey, Zandra, how are you? And um, so I'm going to be using that one. And then we will um, we'll go over our starter kit as far as like the two bottles of foundation, Love and Blood. Our Love is something you might not use every single day. Uh, but it gives your skin some luminosity. And then the blush is something um, that blooms on you. It does kind of um, come up a little bit more after you put it on. So you're only going to be using two drops. A lot of times um, I'll tell newbies to start out with the blush before the foundation. And that way it's a little bit softer uh, and you're using the foundation to blend. So when you start you want to make sure that you are four finger widths away from your face this is the perfect distance to do the makeup now it's not like this and you're not like this so the moves that you make are very deliberate uh you're going around your face there's overlap but you're not going to be in the same spot twice okay and then you want to practice lightly pulling down on this trigger now, there's not a lot of difference from here to here. And so you are going to find that sweet spot. And so practicing with water beforehand is always a good way to do it be, so you don't waste any product. So it's always airbrush for me. I only airbrush, not, but not every day. Okay. And that's a one thing, like, I, that's a question I get a lot is like, oh, do you airbrush every day? If I'm putting makeup on, yeah, I'm airbrushing. Okay. So. Hey, did I say hi, Zandra? I can't remember if I did or not. Um, oh, I, I thought we just went off, but we're still live. Okay. Uh, hello, Zandra. How are you? Um, so I do airbrush every single day. Um, and the reason for that is what I love about the airbrush is that it, if you like, natural, like, I don't want to look like I have makeup on. I just want to even out my skin tone where I want like the lightest of light coverages, airbrushes for you. If you're like, Oh no, give it to me. Let's go. Let's go to town. I, I want, you know, I want that flawless look airbrushes for you using the same makeup, which is pretty cool. So you don't need like a tinted moisturizer and then a, a medium coverage or powder coverage or then a, a full coverage. The foundation that we give you will do everything for you. Okay. And there's different ways that we can kind of enhance the look. Um, you know, if I'm going to spend more, if I have an event or doing something and I want to spend more time doing my makeup, yeah, I'm going to make a few more passes because passes, that's what get, that's what is giving you coverage. Now, keep in mind when you are applying it, that it blends for you. Because that's the one thing I feel like we have to retrain our brains into thinking luminous and not traditional makeup. Traditional makeup, we're used to seeing it go on. And then you have to blend it out. 
but this blends for you. Okay. Once I caught on to the airbrushing, I got rid of my old makeup. I love that Cindy. Um, and then Zondra just said she only airbrushes, but she said, I'm still having issues covering up spots. And guys, let me tell you, every time you have this in your hand, boop, 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 you're learning. Okay. You are learning. So if I hear that maybe you're not getting the coverage, one thing I would have you check is make sure you're not just going. Shh. So like, let's say there's some sunspots and you can do this, make it some passes and then keep going and then go back and make some old pass or some another pass. It is about making passes and you're going to focus on those problem areas, but it should never feel wet or sticky. Okay. The other amazing thing about airbrush, it's very forgiving. So if it does feel wet or sticky or anything like that, just take your finger off the trigger, use the air to dry, but no, you'll get to that point. But I promise you, I promise you, you will have it down. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the airbrushing. Um, I'm going to, I use it. Let me use, somebody asked about, I'm using the peach prism color corrector because somebody asked about that yesterday i think uh julie julie said i'm a newbie and i have wrinkles honey don't we all um so again retraining our brains thinking luminous versus traditional with luminous you do not have to put it all over your face <laughs> you can hit those problem areas and move on with wrinkles and crinkles a couple of things one you definitely need velvet veil velvet veil is amazing this is a primer that you're going to put on beforehand and you're going to put it on with your fingers basically so what i end up doing is i take the dropper out and i do this and i just use that and then i kind of pat it on to those areas that i need to cover so where those wrinkles and crinkles are where the redness is bam, bam, bam. And then you don't want to focus too much on the wrinkles and crinkles. You want to make light passes because what we're doing is we're softening those wrinkles and crinkles. Velvet veil is acts as a, I call it a blur because it's blurs, fine lines, wrinkles and crinkles, redness, all of that. And so you can pat that on and then you'll want to go straight to airbrushing. Your skin's going to feel like velvet. It feels amazing, but it works with airbrush okay so now i'm taking my peach color corrector <laughs> i love it genie and i'm adding like three drops of the peach color corrector peach color corrector is for dark circles sunspots different things like that any um any kind of brown spots um on your face so if i do that i have i'm um, going to go under my eyes. I start my movement first, then lightly pull back on my trigger. Making my passes and I'm using it for everything. Now I'm not going to just stop. And just because the, there might be some redness around my nose, I'm not going to stop and change out to another, um, pre coverage. I'm just going to use that for everything. So again, just making, oh, doing my lids, but practicing with water, practicing with, um, with even like the moisturizer primer, you can practice with that as well. Um, but just, I'm going to blow this out really quick. Um, cause I didn't clean it again. I'm so bad. Don't do what I say. Do as I say. I mean, do as I say, not as I do. So I'm going to run some tip top cleaner through this back bubble a little. If you need extra help, if you're new, remember guys that we do have small group classes. And so those are available Monday and Wednesdays at noon central time. And the link is in the bio. So you can look that up. Um, all right. So we're going to do something a little different. I am going in, I've just done my pre coverage. Now I'm going in with my matte bronzer. And I'm going to do a little bit of contouring. Now, some of you, as soon as I said contouring, you're like, I don't know how to do that. I'm not doing it. 
So just remember foundation evens you out. Foundation is going to um, what we call make you flat. It gets rid of demarcation or it gets rid of any imperfections that we have, redness. It just makes you flat. And so what contouring does, what blush does, what all those things, it's going to add some dimension and add some shape back to your face. And the joy about contouring is we can add that shape where we want it. So I just put like three drops of the matte bronzer. And if you look at the matte bronzer and you're like, nope, too dark, guess what? Mix a drop of your foundation in there with it. Mix a drop of glow in there uh, to make it a little bit lighter, easier for you to use. But now I, I'm doing it before my foundation. So I still can blend some of that off, some of that to a softer look. So turning on my system, <clears throat> I'm going to come in a little bit closer. Normally we say four fingers to do foundations, but I'm going to come into about three fingers, make my movement because I'm getting a little more precise. Now I'm going to go to this side. Is that where I want it? No. Can you even see it? I can. I don't know if you can with these amazing lights that I have. See? Go back to this side. <laughs> Jeannie... Jeannie said, contouring is intimidating, but it changes your life. Do my chin. Now notice again, I'm not staying there until I get it to where I want it. I keep moving. I'm going back and I'm making passes, okay? Spraying super light. Just how you're going to see this kind of grow, that is exactly how you want the foundation to work as well. If you see it instantly, if you, if it, it's like, bam, here I am, you're spraying too hard. And see, you're all blur. I'm going my chin a little bit, cover this. And then that's all I'm going to do. So I don't have to do a lot. You can grow with the contouring. You can start out, even if you wanted to, like, let's say you're a shade three. You can even contour with a shade four if you want to. Like my mom is not a big contour, but she'll do it with like a five. And so she can go in contour with just a little shade darker than what you are. So it doesn't have to be a big difference. Okay. Now... I'm going to go in and do my blush. Which one is this one? This is soft rose blush. I think this one is worth it. One, two drops. That is it. Now, again, coming in a little closer because I'm going to do like kind of apples of the cheeks. Kind of a hot blush used to be like, it's my little in the air, but no, you, I'm going to kind of smirk a little bit and blush is getting a little bit higher. I think because of the mask and everything, but we want, cause we're always fighting gravity. And so we want to pull it up just a little bit more. And I'm doing that right on top of my contour. So there is some overlap there. Now I'm mixing my shade two and my shade three together. So uh, hello, Elaine, how are you? I'm mixing my two and three together uh, because I have, I haven't done my tanning tonic. And so I need, um, I'm a little bit lighter than just my three. Mixing that together. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Pop that down. And then starting <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that Zandra I knew it I'm still working on it I'm working on her 
All right, so I'm gonna go make my passes. So I go in and I make, make one pass all over. Don't know why my, my mirror's moving on me or something. And then I kind of go in, cause most of my coverage is gonna be about right here. And so then I can go in There is a timer in here, by the way. So you hear it go off sometimes. Um, there is a timer, so it will stop after like 10 minutes or so. Um, I think I'm going to do a little bit more coverage here. And also remember, guys, don't keep your system plugged in. You want to charge it about once a week and go from there. Mix these colors again. Okay. Oh, I just splattered on myself. There we go. So I'm just making a couple more passes to get that coverage. I think that's all I needed. All right. So now we're done with the pre coverage. We're done with contouring. We're done with blush. We're done with my foundation. Now, I, if I'm looking in the mirror, if I'm looking at my monitor, this still seems a little harsh to me. So a couple of things you can do to fix that. I could still go over it with airbrush makeup. Um, but let's say I'm just like, oh, let's see. I'm going to grab. And that's the other thing. Like, there's really no mistakes. So I'm doing, I grab my cut one. And just added like softened it up you could do powder you could do i just felt like it was too a little bit too harsh if that makes sense so now i'm trying not to grab the nude and tea. let's grab the nude palette and i'm gonna grab a blending brush and a flat eyeshadow brush and then i usually take a paper towel or tissue and just kind of, if I need to, if I'm blending, I'll hit the paper towel like that just to kind of dust it off before I blend more. So that's why I keep the paper towel in my hand. So let's do, what do we want to do? What shall we do? Should we go smokier? We did a smoky, smoky eye last time. Um, what's the standby time on the breeze? I don't know what you mean, babe. Standby time. I don't know what that means. I'm like trying to think. Let's go in. I'm going to go in with a pretty, um, I'm going to mix. I always mix. I'm mixing rose and the dark, dark brown in the matte palette, starting on the outside corner of my eye. Remember the first place you put a brush is where most of the makeup's going to go. And since it's a darker color, I want it on the outside. And I'm I'm just going to start blending. I'm not picking up my brush. I'm almost blending it to a V. Okay. And this is just to get it on right now. So I'm not really worried about harsh lines quite yet. I'm just going right there. And we talked about this last time too, when doing eyeshadow, if you need that, you can lift it up a little bit if you have more hooded eyes. How long in between uses? Um, Elaine, I use it every... Yes, it will stay charged. Um, just pick one day a week to charge it and you will be good. So like, let's say Saturdays or Sundays, you charge it or Monday or whatever day. Now I'm going to start bringing that over a little bit more because I do want it to fade. I don't want it this dark, but I want it to fade where it's going to give an illusion of maybe a couple of colors because we're fading it. 
Okay, just back and forth, back and forth. I never pick up my brush. Okay. Now, to be honest, I'm good with that. Like I could throw mascara on, throw even throw some eyeliner on, and I'm done. I feel like there's a little harsher line here. I'm gonna blend it all the way up. And there we go. See? And it starts darker here, fades to light, lighter towards the inside. Dark is going to close up your eye. Light will open it. The light will open the eye. So now I'll go in and I'm going to put on, I use the Sahara, but I'm also going to use the desert. It's kind of a mauve color with the desert color. And I'm going to tap that right there. Look, see how it opened up the eye? Okay, back with my blending brush a little bit. Going on top of that. Hey, Lori. And then, just like that. Then take again, taking my blending brush, going in with the, what I started with in my crease, I'm going to go in and place it right there. I love using eyeshadows to line, especially underneath because it is a softer look i don't want anything harsh i don't um even if i had like if we had like a pencil liner i would still go in there and smudge underneath um to make it a little bit softer um i just don't like a hard hard line now i'm going to take my uh powder brush and just swipe underneath in case there were um any fallouts because i did use darker colors um so just in case, swipe. I didn't see any, but I just want to make sure. So now I'm going to take Persuasion. We haven't done eyeliner in forever. So I'm going to take Persuasion eyeliner and go in with that. Lori, we're just, and I'm going to do a very thin, thin line. And people always ask me, you know, when, when do I know to do a thin line, thick line? To be honest, it depends on if I mess up. <laughs> If I mess up, it's going to be a little thicker, but you can go in and it tickle. I'm going to tickle my lash line right there, really soft. And I do start halfway and blend it out and then come back in. Just like that. And see how that eyeliner alone makes it look like more professional more like just judge it judge it up a little bit um oh because it pulls your eyes down yeah sometimes yeah some people think that i it just depends i think a softer look does it because you don't have to do something dark you can do something um like a medium brown or something very neutral uh, to me i feel like it frames the eyes um, and so that's something to think about. Um, can you wet the brush to make the makeup stay longer? Can you wet? Um, you mean the eyeshadow, Elaine? I'm going to do this side now while we're talking. So wetting the brush doesn't have anything to do with making the makeup stay longer. All of, if you're talking about eyeshadow, because all of our products are super high pigmented um and so they they have staying power now you can wet the brush to give it a different look okay so if you want like a creamier um um 
maybe a little bit bolder look, then yes, you can wet the eyeshadow brush and use that for sure. All right. So now eyes are done. And again, when we are talking about airbrushing, um, oh, thank you, Jeannie. Um, when we're talking about airbrushing, airbrushing every single day, you should be airbrushing. Every, if you're wearing makeup, if you're going out, then yeah, you should be airbrushing every single day, regardless of what kind of look you're wanting, because airbrush does it all. Luminous does it all. I can use my, the, my favorite foundation is the Rose 4-in-1. Technically, that is our medium to full coverage foundation. It has a higher pigment load in it. But if I only do one and a half passes just to even me out, then it's not full coverage, right? If I just need to even me out, throw on my eyebrows, throw on mascara, and I'm out the door, then that's what I do. I don't have to give me full coverage every single time. And that's the joy of airbrushing is it can be everything to you. So if you wanted just a tinted moisturizer look, that's airbrush. If you wanted a medium coverage, that's airbrush. If you wanted full coverage, that's airbrush. And there are ways to get that. You get coverage by making passes because how airbrush makeup goes on, it's like little dots going all over the face, right? And so when you're making those passes, we're just filling in that space. So it should always look and feel natural. It should not feel heavy. Or if I was doing full coverage, it should not feel heavy or cakey at all. Period. Dot, dot. All right, I'm going to uh, reach over here. I think they moved this because that's really far. I'm going to use Stark Lip Liner. Now, I did get these little tinted, um, like, lip conditioners that I had on first. And so I'm putting Stark over that. So it's not going to be as bold because I'm not putting it, putting it on a dry lip. And so I'm able to soften it a little bit. Or I still want a, a good lip, but I don't want it to be as bold. And then I'm able to do this and kind of fill that in. So it's a little bit more powerful than Dusty Rose, but because I mixed it with a lip conditioner or a, a tinted lip moisturizer, then it's not going to be as bold as it could be. Make sense? Then I'm going to I have to grab my curler. always curl your lashes now even when putting on fake lashes you want to curl your lashes first what that does is it helps it mix in with the fake lash and so that's why they're already up they're standing up for you oh good Jeannie. i'm glad you like it and see what a difference mascara makes That's why I do not go out of the house without my um, mascara on. Sometimes I have to wait and put it on because my allergies. But it makes a huge difference. So there you go, guys. Easy and breezy. Get it, breeze. So you can do it. Remember, if you are new, guys, I'm telling you up front, this is a new way of putting on makeup. Not only are you putting it on a, a new way, but how it's applied, how it's going to feel on your skin is going to be new. What a lot of people do is they put it on like traditional makeup and it's not traditional makeup. It's the opposite of traditional. And so there is a little bit of a learning curve. Don't get frustrated everybody in here went through it you can also book a small group class 
Um, we have classes on Mondays and Wednesdays at noon. You can book a class. I go over every, like any problems, questions, situations you're having, we go over and address those. And so we can do that. If you need to reach out to customer service, feel free to give them a call. The number is listed in the description below, in the bio below. And so give them a call. If you're on Facebook, you can even direct message them. Um, truth be told, that's how I would do it because um, it, to me, it's just easier. You don't have to sit on the phone. You just direct message, get on Luminous Cosmetics Facebook page, like our page, and then direct message them with all the information that they will need. Name, phone number associated with account, address uh, with the account, and then their address. Tell them what the problem is. Guys, we bend over backwards to make sure you're happy, okay? That's why we're doing these classes as well. That's why I do lives every day, Monday through Thursday. So there you go. All right. So great seeing you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And yeah, we come to you live Monday through Thursday, 10.30 a.m. Central Time. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.